This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I don't know, I was just looking up, you know, purple plants. You don't really see so many of them, so... And I saw this image of one, and it was purple. I decided to go on the website of this page, um, of this plant, and I find out that it is a website that is completely devoted to this plant. And this is not just any simple pothos that you can buy in a store. It is one that is being created through the use of science. A brand that creates genetically modified plants to clean the air in your home and is putting a lot of efforts into creating this one plant. The website said it's called Ex Natura and the plant is called Asa One. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome back to the channel. Now, I wasn't going to make another one of these videos. I thought I'd said my piece, I thought that was done. However, there are a few things that have come to light and something's kind of happened on Instagram a little bit that I need to clarify. So, we're making up a follow-up video today because if you couldn't tell from the introduction, some stuff's gone down, some stuff's gone down. If you have not seen my last video on Neoplants and their special pothos last week, you need to go and watch that because this video is not going to mean much to you if you don't, okay? So I will link it down below, pause it, go watch that one, come back, and then we're all up to date. So I need to clear something up. So a couple of subscribers of mine actually sent me screenshots of Neoplants' Instagram where I think they were having a conversation with them and they informed them that I had been deleting their YouTube comments. So apparently they tried to leave comments on my last video that hopefully you've seen and I've deleted them. I just want to clarify that has not happened and what has happened is, I'm going to show you it, I've actually had to leave it where it is in order to prove my point otherwise I have no proof but it's actually gone into my spam folder okay so if you don't know if you're not a creator or anything like that if you don't know YouTube comments can be filtered into spam it won't notify the creator it won't do anything of the sort there's a few reasons why it might go into spam but looking at the comment that they have posted I think they've posted it twice one from Neoplants's YouTube channel and the second I think is from one of the CEO's uh, YouTube accounts okay it's basically the same comment what I think has happened is they've comprised a comment elsewhere so they've drafted it out they've then gone to the video they've clicked on it they've pasted in the comment and that's it so YouTube flagged it as spam because it understands that the the video hasn't been in view long before the comment was left not only that but the comment has links in it okay YouTube is very very weird about links and comments a lot of the time it will block something that it thinks is a link even if it isn't there's part Parts of what people are saying, for example, where they haven't put like a space after a full stop or something and it looks like a web address and YouTube's gone, no. So anyway, I want to clear that up. I haven't done that, okay? I would not deny a brand the right to comment on my videos. I I have no motive either to keep a comment like that from everybody because there's nothing really in it, okay? So as of me editing this video, not even before this one goes live, those comments are now approved on that video. So they're all up for everyone to see. So just a reminder, if you want to go and see what Neoplans said on the last video, feel free, it should be in the comments. I'm sure you will find it. In the future, Neoplants, it might be better to contact me on Instagram because to be honest, I'm not sure why you didn't because you did actually reach out to me a couple of hours before my video came out once you'd noticed the thumbnail of the video on my Instagram stories. So you contacted me then. I don't see why you didn't contact me afterwards. I did contact them though, guys. And I asked them eight questions, of which I'm going to go through later, and you might want to see the answers to them. Right, now that is out the way, <laughs> let's start the video. Because honestly, guys, I, I found some stuff. I found some stuff, so let's get into it, shall we? After the last video, I noticed in one of my comments that a subscriber was pointing me towards another video on YouTube about something completely different. This YouTuber appears to be known by the name of Granty Panties, which I can only assume is a tribute to actually one of my favorite movies that I probably can't repeat on here. They made a video all about this really cool plant that they saw online. It's a new variety of Epipremnum, and this one is purple. Who doesn't want a purple? 
purple vining pothos plant. Regardless of its capabilities to clean the air, it is just a very beautiful specimen. I'm just gonna read things exactly off the website, what it says about it, and uh, we'll talk about it. It says, the best of nature in one organism developed to purify the air in your home. The design, our patented variety, has a unique color. So they call the purple Moonlight Purple. It says that it will allegedly remove 95% of most harmful VOCs. It comes with accessories. It comes with a pot made of recycled and recyclable materials and a built-in water reservoir. Our pot has been designed to maximize the airflow through the roots for optimal removal of pollutants. So let's take a look, shall we? So this website no longer exists. This is found on Wayback Machine, which anybody can look for if you like. So this plant was created by a company called Ex Natura. They are offering us a purple bioengineered Epipremnum Aureum, I think, for a starting price of $179. We do get some animated graphs, some cool things all across the website of how it works, what's going on. They do claim that this pothos or epipremnum, whichever you want to call it, is a patented variety and they are calling the colour of it Moonlight Purple. Very nice, very nice. So, what does it say? It says, first of its kind, Asa 1 is a new variety of pothos. It has been bioengineered by our team of 15 scientists who effectively capture and recycle the most dangerous airborne indoor pollutants formaldehyde, benzene, toluene, xylene, as well as, of course, CO2. Does this sound familiar to you at all? Does it just make you think of anything, anything in particular? So let's take a look at their FAQs, shall we? I have to point out that the pictures on this website of this Epipremnum Pothos, I'll probably use that interchangeably, are CGI, right? They're not real. That's not a real Epipremnum that you're looking at. It's computer generated imagery, okay? If you didn't know what CGI was. So in the FAQ, we start off as follows. Is ASA1 a real plant? Answer, 100%. We used 3D renderings to show a fully developed plant, but ASA1 is growing in our facilities right now. Remember this, guys, because it's going to come in handy later. And this is in 2021. This is as far back as this website goes. It is 2021. That is the first capture on way back. It's early 2021, I think. Which pollutants can ASA1 eliminate? Formaldehyde, benzene, toluene, xylene, grouped under the name of volatile organic compounds, VOCs, and CO2. Are the pollutants targeted by ASA1 due to their especially harmful characteristics in indoor environments? They mainly come from cleaning products, solvents, varnishes, glues, resins, and certain materials used in furniture that we all have inside our homes. ASA1 is also able to filter particulate matter but to a lesser extent so far. I'm gonna repeat that. ASA1 is also able to filter particulate matter, but to a lesser extent so far in 2021. Something should stand out to you there, guys. That last sentence is something that the, the Neo PX or the Neo P1 by Neo Plants, that plant can't do that. That plant cannot do that. Sounds pretty good though, right? God, someone's cracked it. Hold that thought, I'd like to talk about Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. If you're looking to create and manage your own website online, then Squarespace might be exactly what you're looking for. There is a selection of really useful and cool looking templates, and you can customize them so easily and make them your own. Let's really quickly make a plan shop website. We give it a name, we pick the sections we want to include on our homepage, pick extra pages we might need, colors, fonts, and even a conversational style that the AI of your website is going to fill in for us. We can also add some extra stuff of our own as well, of course. Let's ask Squarespace AI to write a short section on propagating houseplants. It gives us back a lovely little blurb, and with a few more tweaks, we can change the image next to it to make it fit with our houseplant theme. How easy was that? If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Allen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And back to the video. So back to the video, Granty Panties says that they posted about it on Facebook and there was an awful lot of buzz in his own words. Lots of people were contacting the website, I presume. I can only presume because shortly after this happened. So I posted these plants on those groups 
the response <laughs> blew up. The funny thing is, is a couple hours later in the day, and there's hundreds of messages, hundreds of responses, people fighting and debating and this and this and that. The website crashed. It either crashed or there were too many signups or people were sending too many questions. So now the complete loading page is gone. I had to like somehow sneak in and find these um, questions and uh, answers and information about this plan because it's all gone now. So they think, okay, we'll just sign up to the email. So I signed up on the waiting list and I ended up getting an email later advising that the name of the company is actually Neoplans. And I don't know why they don't actually go by that name because I think it's a fine name. Essentially guys, Ex Natura is Neoplans. They came out with this website in 2021 with a CGI purple epipremnum pothos that claimed it could filter out VOCs and particulate matter. No mention of any drops applied. There was mention of a patent, I think, but that's about it. And this is pure speculation, right? I'll make that very clear. It's pure speculation, but I think what happened was, you got to think back, guys. This is 2021. This is not too long after the, the pink Congo boom and everyone was a bit ooh, about any chemicals or certainly chemically altered colors in plants absolutely i think this was posted on facebook i think that this garnered a lot of negative attention and they had to take down the front facing aspect of the website to prevent people from looking at it that is what i think do you know why i think that i think that because if it gained so much positive attention and it was received so well why would you take down the front of your website and cover it with a splash why would you do that Moving on. The first thing I decided to do upon my research was search for patents that this company has. Now that we know it's Neoplants and we know the name of their old company or whoever they were posing as, or I, I, I don't know. Okay, I look for some patents. They have two patents that I can find. I'm not saying they don't have more, I'm saying I've found two. And they're in the same place, which I would like to think if they had them, they would be there. I will link all this down below. I think they had a patent granted in 2024, so that's this year, for the shell, their self-watering plant pot design. They had a patent on that. Interesting choice. The other patent is in 2022, which is a year after the Ex Natura website pops up in 2021. I did search for Ex Natura for a patent and I could find nothing. The only patents I've found pertain to Neoplants, just so you know. This patent is for, in, in my terms, okay, this isn't the precise wording, it's, com patents are actually quite complicated, I did try my best to understand it, but from what I can deduce from this, the patent is for a method of combining a bioengineered houseplant that is stably transformed with added effects applied to it. And again, I'm summarizing that in layman's terms. This is very involved, okay? That's the gist of it anyway. I would imagine that this patent is highly likely to represent the Neo P1. So if you remember, they have the Neo PX, which is just a regular epipremnum with nothing done to it and the drops. And they are working at the moment, it's in development on the P1, which is a bioengineered version of the epipremnum with the drops. So it would seem that the patent is for that. So I then hit the Wayback Machine for Neoplants. I found some interesting stuff, guys. So up until early 2024, they were selling, they had no mention of NeoPX on their website right? They only were selling the Neo P1 and they weren't selling it yet. It wasn't released yet. I have to say that. But they also had a different version of their white paper to download on their website, right? Because it's for something slightly different. It's for the Neo P1 and not the Neo PX. So they changed it. It's hard to tell when it was changed because Wayback Machine does not take a snapshot of a website when it's updated. It, I can't remember how it actually takes a snapshot of a website, but just because there is a snapshot on a certain date, if you want to look for yourself, it doesn't mean it was updated on that date. But I know that early 2024, there was a different version of the white paper up there and they were not selling Neo PX. No mention, no mention. To prove this, not only was the Neo P1 linked in the white paper, but also I think in the product page for the power drops, it talks about the power drops being in combination with a bioengineered houseplant. So it has to be the P1, it has to be the P1. So anyway, this paper is around about three pages longer than the paper for the Neo PX. And honestly, guys, I, I gave the, the new white paper some shit in my last video, but this 
this other white paper, I've got to give it to you, it's much easier to read. It's much easier to read. I find it so much more easy to understand. It also has some extra information in it. So one of them is about the removal of formaldehyde, which I presume at this point is what the Neo P1 is going to do, that the Neo PX cannot. I think that's, I'm not saying that's the only difference. We don't know, but I'm saying that's one of the main key differences that really stands out from their literature. So I get the impression that they were really trying to communicate the long lasting power of the power drops. And it would seem like the power drops last longer. It just does. In the, the version of the Neo P1 paper, I couldn't find anything to suggest that it needed to be topped up monthly. I get, I get this sentence actually in the older paper. So the paper for the P1, I get this. Lastly, we maximize the ability of these microbes to form long-term interactions with the plant, thus creating a stable microbiome that keeps its VOC degrading efficiency at 100% for several weeks. Okay, we do also, you're gonna love this though, we get a wonderful graph, guys. Look at this graph that they've put in for us. This is so nice of them to do this. This graph is titled, Degradation of Toluene by Epipremnum aureum, with or without optimized formulation, four weeks post-inoculation. And by the looks of this, it's able to still remove the measured amount of toluene in the air in just five hours. After four weeks, four whole weeks, guys, that's a month. How impressive, how impressive is that? Now you're probably thinking, okay, but maybe the new plant doesn't need to be topped up as much, but don't worry guys, because I asked them about it. More on that later. It would appear to me that the removal of that graph and the removal of that sentence arrived in the paper that is now for the PX. So there are two papers, by the way, and I do keep talking about an old version of the paper. The reason I do that is because it really does feel like a find and replace that they've done, okay? I'm gonna leave both papers down below for you. I would like to invite you to look at them. For me personally, okay, the wording has changed, but the content is basically the same. There is not a lot different. There's not a lot different, but we did lose that graph and we did lose that sentence. We do get, what do we get? The, we get the removal of the formaldehyde in the experiment they ran in this older paper for the Neo P1, right? Now, the method of the experiment they have used intrigues me a little bit, and I did not touch on this in the last video. The experiments they have done for both the Neo P1 and the Neo PX basically mean when they do this experiment, they're pumping pollutants into a 35 liter gas container. Now, I found a really cool article from Wired. Yes, I know. I found an article from Wired where they, I think they've obviously gone to see neoplants in their office. It's a very interesting read. Highly suggest you read this. But in the article published, which was last year, so that's 2023, it said that the neoplants' expansion of testing to a real room scenario was not yielding consistent results. It was proving a little bit unreliable from what Wired say. And they do appear to have gone to the office. Again, I'll link that below, but just to clarify, it turns out that more studies of this nature are carried out using a sealed small container. That's not something specific to neoplants that they've done. A lot of um, experiments are done that way. I think the NASA study was done in a very similar way, but I also think that NASA criticized the application of that to a real world setting. They acknowledged that, that wasn't necessarily a real world setting. But it's okay, right? Because neoplants are doing one of the first things of this kind to be done. They're chartering new territory. It's really bold to have a house plant that's purifier and all that, right? <sighs> not quite, guys, not quite. So the engineered strain of bacteria that is the star of the show in Power Drops. Also, here's the formula of Power Drops from earlier this year that was placed on their website that I, I don't know is there anymore. I don't think so. But as of early January 2024, this was here. So I'm popping it in for you now while I talk. The Pseudomonas putida bacteria that is present in these drops is... It's actually well documented for the removal of VOCs from the air, and it has been for a long time, guys. In fact, there is a scientist, what is his name? I cannot pronounce it, I'm about to butcher it. Ananda Mohan Chakabarti. He was a scientist in the 80s that actually patented a variety of this bacteria. Yes, he did patent a bacteria, by the way. It went to court and it won because there was opposition to that, but it won. So how cool is that? Because it was so good at removing VOCs, love that love that. 
Now, I'm not saying neoplants haven't gone through research and development for years, okay? Because they actually have, I've read quite a few things that I could get my hands on and they have, that, it's, that's not a lie, it's true. What I'm saying is they knew where to look, okay? I don't know if they've picked a slightly different strain underneath this umbrella of bacteria just to avoid that patent because it is a patent that exists, it won. I don't know, but I'm just saying they knew where to look. They didn't randomly pioneer this. This, this information has been around since 1980, even before that, because that's only when the patent was, right? The bacteria has been well researched, as has Epipremnum, with regards to VOCs and formaldehyde removal. Here are some papers that I found. I found a few, but here's one from 2008, 2010, 2011, and so on. So that's well documented as well. That's not necessarily a new thing. Science has been working on this for a long time. It is a researched topic. It would also seem that they have ruffled a couple of feathers within their own community. Here is a tweet from Stuart Strand, who is the plant creator for Origin Plants. Stuart wrote this lovely paper in 2019, before the 2021 website for the ASA won by X Natura, aka Neo plants. Very interesting. By the way, guys, you should check out Origin Plants because they are also specializing in air purifying bioengineered houseplants. I do believe specifically Epipremnum aureum as well because it's well researched and because they've been working on it for years. It is a different methodology, I think. I'm not saying it's the same process. It can't be. Obviously, there's patents going, but it is a very similar product. So I have to tell you that. Link is below again if you'd like to take a look. Uh, the reason it would seem to me that Neo Plants are better known than other companies such as this because there may be more. This is just one I happen to find. They are kind of buried a little bit actually. But the reason I think that Neoplants has done better guys is really simple. It's marketing. They have better marketing. They have a better marketing team. Otherwise, I guess if the other company had a good marketing team, they'd be everywhere. So not knocking it, just saying that's probably why you haven't heard of the other company because Neoplants are kind of really pushing themselves. I have heard since the, the last video I put out that there are a lot of YouTubers and influencers that are doing affiliate stuff, promo codes, stuff like that for it so neoplants obviously is switched on and they know where they need to be so i just thought that was interesting though right so i asked neoplants some questions off the back of my reading off the back of this video plan and they got back to me i'm going to put in all the questions in full and all of the answers in full because if i don't i don't want to be accused by neoplants of taking out a question to somehow like skew any narrative i've got going on okay so i must give you all these questions and i must give you all these answers but I asked the following questions. There's a couple of juicy ones in there. So let's go through them one by one, shall we? Number one, why do you need to top up the Neo PX every month? I think it's quite clear why I asked this. It's, I asked this because I found some interesting things in the patent. I found some interesting things in their paper, their scientific paper that they submitted with their patent, which is so long. It's like 300 and odd pages. It's, it's a great read. And I, I just wanted to know, I want to know why they say you have to top it up every month. And they say, all plant microbiomes change and evolve over time due to factors like growing conditions and environmental stresses. After a month, our scientists observe a significant decrease in the number of active air purifying microorganisms. So we recommend adding power drops to NeoPX once a month to keep performance at the highest level. If you want to know more, you can find a graph on our website showing the degradation that we observe in NeoPX's microbial population over time. So let's have a look at the graph. Now, the thing that gets me about this graph, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm just a layman, I'm just a layman, but does that not show a 90% effectiveness at one month? I, th I think, Approximately, I think that's what it shows. Now, maybe, maybe it's just me, right? You also have the two month mark, you have it at approximately 50% effectiveness in two months. So eight weeks has dropped down to 50% effectiveness. Now, this is completely personal, right? What I'm about to say is complete personal opinion. But for me, it's a terrible comparison, but I probably wouldn't top anything up at 50%. I wouldn't top up a glass of water at 50%. I wouldn't fill up my car at 50%, depending on where I'm going, of course. I personally wouldn't top it up that early, and I would not personally argue it's a significant decrease in performance if it's running at 90% effectiveness after four weeks. According to your graph, which by the way, I couldn't find a graph for this. 
in any of the other papers. I could not find this. So, I don't know. I couldn't find it, that's all I'm saying. Your wording in your patent, in your big scientific paper, in the paper for the Neo P1, does suggest a long-standing relationship between the microbiome and the plant, albeit yes, for the P1. I will get onto that at the moment. There's a reason why I asked about the formula for power drops, trust me. I'm just surprised. I'm surprised to hear that there is a significant decrease in performance when I've read elsewhere that it seems to be really good, especially after four weeks. I don't know. But anyway, let's move on. We've got questions to get through. So, number two, will you need to top up the Neo P1 every month? Is this for the same reason? I asked this just in case there was something different, guys, about the drops for the Neo P1 and the PX. Just in case the drops change, just in case. Yes, Neo P1 will be composed of our genetically modified plant and microbiome engineering feature in brackets, power drops. So we will still recommend topping up to reactivate the air purifying microorganisms. I just, it's weird to me. It's weird to me, guys, because even again, as of January 2024, in your white paper for the Neo P1, you did not mention topping this shit up monthly. You didn't mention it. So um, it's weird to me because honestly, why would a genetically modified plant need to be topped up? I don't know. Number three, why don't you list your area coverage of a plant? We do mention coverage on our website, on the NeoPX page, under technical specifications. We recommend one plant per 160 square foot, which equates approximately to an average sized bedroom. So on this one, guys, fair enough. Maybe I just missed it in the first video. I wanted to put that there in case anyone wants to go and look that up. Thank you for the clarification. Genuinely, if I've missed it, it was not my intention. I would have actually liked to know that. Could have made some really good comparisons, but never mind. So then we get on to the meat. The meat, the meat, the meat. Question four. Do you have a real photograph of ASA1 and not CGI? They reply. When you refer to ASA1, do you mean a new variety of plant with a different color? If so, this is confidential information, but we are still working on that. We would be happy to do a video call with you and show you some of the progress we've made on that front directly from the lab if you are up for it. We would not be able to share it more broadly yet though. I have to ask a follow-up question on this. And I say, with regards to number four, the ASA one, you were trying to sell this plant at the time and I'm genuinely not trying to ask for any confidential information at all. Only a photograph that is not CGI, like the ones on your website, in order to prove its existence. That is the only reason I would like to see a photograph. I'm not interested in anything behind the scenes. Nothing at all, nothing, no information. I just want to see a picture of a purple epipremnum that is not CGI. You couldn't do it. They reply, as mentioned above, ASA1 slash X Natura was an e-commerce test we had to run in order to test several aspects of our value proposition. So the only call to action was to join a waitlist and we were not selling a product yet. These kinds of experiments are a necessary step to go through for early stage companies like us before investing years of research and development efforts, which we transparently explained to our community over email back then. The R&D projects we are currently working on are confidential, but if you are okay to sign a standard non-disclosure agreement with us, we would happily give you a preview of what we're building next. Okay, no photo of a plant that they've seemingly had in development by this point, a minimum of four years prior, because it's prior to 2021, they must have been developing it to even have it in 2021. So let's just say it's four years. Let Fuck it. Let's say it's three years. Three years of a plant in development. You can't just show me one picture of an epipremnum. Okay, I don't personally see why the image, just the image of a plant is confidential when you are happy to build a whole website on it. A whole website, to be honest, featuring stuff that you claim is the science that is arguably more confidential. I'm not understanding that. You know, they claimed at the time, is ASA1 a real plant? And they said, yes, 100%. We use 3D renderings to show a fully developed plant, but ASA1 is growing in our facilities right now. Right now. So you should have plenty of full-grown plants. Surely, surely you've got tons, tons and tons. You must do. It's, this is years since now. And we all know epipremnum grows like stink. Guys, I'm probably not going to have a call with them and sign an NDA. And the reason is because I can't tell you anything. So I'm not saying this would happen. 
But if I got on call and they went, yeah, no, we trashed that, I can't tell you that. If they said, it's not real, I can't tell you that. If they showed me that it was real, I can't tell you that. So personally, for me, I think it would be fruitless to do that, right? So just letting you know where I stand on that in case somebody wants to know where I stand, that's kind of it. Because I don't, I don't see what we can gain from that personally. I might gain something, but I'm not sure we all would. So I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. Anyway, I think the only thing I can do here, guys, is let you guys form your opinions on their response, because there's a little bit to take in there, and I would love to hear your comments specifically on that one, because I know a lot of people are going to be talking about the ASA one from this video. I'm sure you'll be talking about a few things, but I know the ASA one is going to be mentioned. Absolutely. So I'm going to leave you to decide what you think about their answers there. Right, number five. Why did you remove formaldehyde removal capabilities to create the Neo PX? Because remember, the Neo P1 appears to be able to remove formaldehyde, the Neo PX cannot. So they said, the power drops that come with Neo PX tackle the BTX pollutants, so that's benzene, toluene, and xylene. We're currently going through the regulatory process for our formaldehyde degrading strains and hope to release this feature soon. Okay, so that would indicate it's in the P1, it's in the plant, the plant's doing the formaldehyde. Could be wrong, but that's what it would indicate. Number six, another really good question. Why is it that the ASA-1 could filter particulate matter, but the Neo P1 slash PX could not? Neither of them can. They replied, as a reminder, ASA-1 X Natura was an e-commerce test we did to measure demand for our value proposition of our early days in development. I do not recall we had claims about particulate matter. That being said, particulate matter are much bigger modules, which are easy to catch through mechanical filters or air purifiers. We focus on VOCs, which are much smaller, harmful molecules that are harder to eliminate and not well addressed by traditional technologies. Now, 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 now I have an issue. Now you've totally stepped on it. Now I have an issue. So you're saying, well, there's a lot to break down in this one. It's actually a really good question. There's a lot to break down here. So you are now saying you would need theoretically one of your house plants, whichever one it is, it doesn't even matter. Let's just go with the Neo P1, the updated, you know, vamped up version. You are still stating that we would need a purifier for particulate matter and one of your house plants. Fine, right, glad you said it. Because saying something is not well addressed, as you say, not well addressed by traditional technologies, saying something is not well addressed is very different to saying other things can't really do it. And in your table at the end of your new white paper, the one for the Neo PX, you strongly indicate to me that traditional air purifiers, traditional, cannot utilize, filter, degrade, get rid of benzene, toluene, or xylene. Isn't that weird? Because they can. It's, they can. We've proven that they can. It's all over Dyson's website that they can. And this is an updated paper from this year because I know so because we've updated it. They can do that. Why? You must tell me why you are saying that they cannot do that when they can do that. I also notice, I also notice that your Neo PX cannot filter particulate matter. But the ASA one could. The real plant that you were working on in your laboratory that was absolutely real, you just, it was just an e-commerce test. So was it real or was it not real? What are you saying? You're being so diplomatic. Honestly, I, hats off to you. But anyway, this table, here you are, genuinely indicating that traditional technologies cannot build to VOCs. That's what this means. That's what you're trying to say. You're also trying to say that normal house plants can't do it, but they actually kind of can, so. Awkward. I would imagine that Neoplants does not like particulate matter, does not want to focus on particulate matter because the molecules are just too big for a plant to filter. Can you imagine a, a plant filtering pet dander or dust? I can't. And I think that's why they don't even touch particulate matter. They don't want to be near it, which is great and all, except you made a little bit of a mistake when you put it on the Asimons website. A little bit of a mistake that. You 100% claimed that that plant that was totally real, totally growing, could filter particulate matter. If ASA-1, let me ask you this, Neoplants, if ASA-1 was indeed very, very real, how could you get something like that so wrong? That's weird, isn't it? Right, back to power drops. Are the power drops the same formula for both the Neo-PX and the Neo-P1? Are they the same? One answer, one word, correct. Just keep that in your brain a second. Number eight. 
I'm going to butcher this one. Do they contain Cladophyllophora immunda and Cladophyllophora samophila? The answer, no, these fungal strains are not present in the power drops. Now, this is going to be the first time you've heard those words come out of my mouth. That's because I found this in the huge, super big paper that they wrote as part of their patent. Okay, link is in the description. There was a little section in the paper that I actually thought was really cool because it was a really cool statement about these two particular strains of fungi that I've just mentioned. They have code names in here, but they do map the code names to the fungi in the paper. The degradation speed of toluene actually started to speed up after four weeks of using these wonderful fungal strains is really quite awesome. I imagine finding that out. How cool is that? I mean, it starts to degrade. Obviously, if you're going to introduce bacteria to something, I imagine you're going to get some die off. But after four weeks, it seems to be on the up again. How cool is that, guys? How cool is that? After four whole weeks, it's on the up. You know, it seems a real shame you couldn't use something like that, you know? But just to confirm, this is why I asked the question, these fungi are not present in either versions of the power drops. <sighs> right, I need to hydrate. My final thoughts. So from everything that I have seen, read, heard, since I started this a couple of weeks ago, honestly, the Neo P1 is a real thing. It does have serious research and development behind it. And honestly, it is quite involved. I'm not making any claim in this video that it is not. It really does appear to be, okay? It does, however, from everything I have read, feel like that the Neo PX has just genuinely popped up seemingly out of nowhere. Kind of last minute, if I'm completely honest, you can go on Wayback Machine, you can see this for yourself. I invite you to have a go, have a ponder, have a look. It's popped up seemingly out of nowhere. This could be to generate some revenue while they can they continue to work on the P1. After all, they do have $20 million of investment that they probably need to recoup some revenue on, some return on their investment. But again, as of last year, according to Wired, they were having some trouble with the reliability of their results in a real test room scenario. And I think they were building special labs to replicate these rooms, right? In this Wired article. Again, the, the, that Wired article, guys, is very, very interesting. I suggest you read it. Presumably, obviously, the Neo P1 is still in development because they need to iron out those things. All right. The Wayback Machine for the Neoplans website as of the 15th of January of this year, 2024, shows they were intending on selling the P1. That's what it shows. You can go and look at it yourself. That wasn't that long ago, to be honest. And again, the proof is in the listing for the power drops that it shows it being basically combined with a bioengineered plant and not a host. It does genuinely just back up the, the theory that I have that it's, it's literally, well, it's not even a theory. It has come out of nowhere, essentially. And again, to top this off, we got the old version that was still online in January for the Neo P1, seemingly now with some very interesting stuff that is removed from the PX. That very, very interesting graph and the very, very interesting sentence. All gone. All gone. I think that in terms of these power drops, I think that to say that something is drastically decreased in effectiveness after four weeks when it's running at 90% is just pull the other one like that. I just think that's stupid. I, I don't think that's a fair assessment at all. And you know what? Maybe don't bury your graph like that because, okay, I missed it, fair enough. But why are you burying that kind of graph? Why wasn't it in the paper? And why isn't it a proper graph, not just sort of, you know, like a web generated graph? Why haven't you done that? Why can't you put more backing behind why this needs topped up every month? Why can't you add that to your paper? Because I'm telling you now, it would help you out. If you've genuinely got good backing for why this bacteria tails off this much in that amount of time, and you can really show us that, you're probably gonna have a lot of more respect from your customer base because they will really understand why. Because remember, you are the company that are putting out all these papers and you're bothering to put papers out, white papers for people. So put that that information in there why are you leaving it out why was it in what was that graph about what was that graph about now don't get me wrong that graph might indicate the you know the degradation of the toluene by the, the speed sorry by like four weeks or something it was still showing it could do it in like five hours or whatever now don't get me wrong you know 100% might have been four hours but that's that's quite effective you know like why <sighs> I don't think I need to ask you guys why they removed that graph. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real at this point. Like I can't I can't do this without just keeping it real. I really can't. If you're saying that this needs topped up after four weeks, 
how is it a long-lasting, stable interaction? How? how? Is, maybe that's subjective, maybe that's me. I don't think so, though. If the Asa One, the, let's talk about the Asa One, guys. If that existed, why does it seem so closely related to the Neo P1? When it was so different, and it's a different thing that they're working on, they can't show me. It's very, very close. I think if you actually took out the purple color, it's the same, or it would appear the same, I should say. Again, they would not show me the image of Asa One. I don't personally see what confidentiality thing that breaks. Personal opinion, again, I can't see how that would. I haven't asked for any scientific information pertaining to it, anything personal or anything, literally. Getting lost for words here. Because I just don't want to state the obvious, because that's for you guys, I think. I also think that calling themselves, they're really strong on marketing the fact that they, they're like the first guys to do this sort of thing. And I just think it's kind of, it's it's brave in it. There's obviously other companies doing it. Now I'm not saying the other company is better. I'm not saying that Neoplants is better. I'm not saying they're the same. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying the science all works. I'm not making a statement on it. All I'm saying is there's is, there is other companies out there. I guess your marketing is just better. Is is from what I can detain because I'm not saying any one person is better than the other but there are these other companies what I will say is these other companies that are doing similar things do have things published much earlier than your patent was which obviously we've covered so look guys there's probably gonna be a lot of opinions spinning on this video. Um, I, I don't really know how to end it because honestly, this is a lot. I've done so much reading on this, it's crazy. But if you are genuinely thinking about buying one of these things, I'm not here to dissuade you from buying it. I'm here to show you what's going on. That's it. If you want to buy one of these things, have at it, great. Let me know how it is. But I think if you want to buy one of these things, please bear in mind that there are other companies that are developing this, are doing this. This is a field in development that is actually, it's quite well research and if you really really want to go on like google scholar or whatever and have a look around you will find a shit ton of stuff on epipremnum and formaldehyde or vocs and stuff like that you'll find stuff on the bacteria that is being used not that specific strain but the general family of bacteria that is being used i mean heck they, um, no one's to say they're not using that same strain that is patented and they're not just paying some of the patent i doubt it though if someone has a phd i'm sure they will they'll find a similar strain to use that they can avoid the patent with i would imagine but anyway if you want to get one just as always with anything with anything guys do your research do your research i would love to hear your opinions on this special thank you i don't think they do youtube anymore i don't know i tried to reach out to them to get in touch a uh, special thank you to granty panties that is arguably the star of today's video to be honest that's without that video dude i I'd have had a, a longer place to start, I think. You really covered the timeline of what happened. So if you ever happen to see this, thank you very much for that. Much credit to you, much credit to you. Thank you also to my wonderful subscribers that helped me out. You sent me screenshots of basically what was going on. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. And I would not be able to release those comments from Spam Filter. Hopefully clear up the confusion. I'm assuming Neoplants that this clears it up. And I guess that is it for this video. I cannot wait to see your comments. If you like this video, guys, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that you really appreciate the slog that I've created here today. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you so could subscribe. I can't get my words out today. I am so tired. I've done this all week. But also, my merch is in the description. Merch shake, because I did it in the last video and you all loved it. Thank you very much, guys. I will see you in the next one. Happy commenting. Bye.